Hey guys, how you doing? Sorry for the slightly late start tonight. And the guy being sorry about that is me, Bill Sylvie, a.k.a. The Dungeon Delver, coming to you live on a stream, a live stream, if you will. Welcome to the show. It is good to see you, and it is good to be seen by you. And I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic Wednesday evening. So I was scrambling around trying to get a piece of software working on this PC that works fine on my editing PC, but of course, you know how it goes. Uh, hello, Winter Wolf, Michael Dale, Von Gifford, Wenger, Corian, the Lord Corian, that is, uh, Tim Imholt, still upright and everything. Um, but welcome, uh, and Mercury Walls, I see over there, if I didn't already say hello to you. I greet you now. Um, so guys, we're 5,602 subscriptions on this YouTube channel. Uh, it, thousands and thousands of subscribers have joined us in the last year. And I can't thank you enough. I really am genuinely grateful for everything and every way that people support this channel. The best thing in the world you can do is click the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. Maybe check out our sponsors. Like, for example, for this live stream, it's brought to you by our friends at Hellebard Games. Hellebard makes the kind of adventures they'd like to play, whether it's for Castles and Crusades, 5th edition, or the OSR. Old School is in play at the table with Hellebard Games, and you can check them out on Drive Through RPG or on their website, hellebardgames.com, linked in the description below. Um, it is my mirror universe, the Dungeon Delvers out there. Good to see you. Uh, Michael Mertig. That close to being Michael Mertwig. Um, <clears throat> so because we have no agenda, um, we are agenda free. I had a lot of fun today. I, I, I did a video today uh, with uh, Tim Imholt that was a lot of fun. Um, but... Uh, we uh, we hung out. And we talked about the nefarious plans of Wizards of the Coast. Tim's got that that monetary brain thing. It's 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 like underneath his skull is a second brain that just does money stuff. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, so we talked about that a little bit over on his uh, stream, and that was good. Uh, I I enjoyed talking to him about that. Um, and guess what? There's going to be another video for me tomorrow, another interstitial, because I think the time to, to talk about the thing that I'm going to talk about tomorrow is rapidly slipping away. But that's for tomorrow. That is for tomorrow. Uh, speaking of things I would like to talk about, something that is not slipping away, but is in fact slipping up towards us, guys, is the great underground online gaming convention. That's right, guys. The guac, as we call it. Um, it is a convention where, from the convenience of your own home, your couch, your swimming pool, if you have one of those fancy water computers, I don't know, uh, you can attend a gaming convention from Wednesday, the 24th of April, until Sunday, the 28th of April, five days of conventioning where you can play all kinds of classic tabletop RPGs run by all kinds of classic tabletop RPG people. I think they're classics anyway. Um, we're going to have giveaways. We're going to have an artist alley. We're going to have a panel discussion, maybe two, who knows? Um, we, we have merch. We even have merch. Uh, and the cost to you is nothing is absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm excited about this. I hope you guys will sign up. It's over on Warhorn. We're doing it all on Discord. You don't have to have a camera. Like, you know, you don't have to go buy a 4K DSLR or anything stupid like that. You can just come and just with whatever device you have that gets on the internet and gives you audio and we'll run the Discord app you can come and hang out with us and it, it'll, it'll be just, just a kicking good time. 
Maybe you've only got Wednesday evening free. Maybe Thursday's your jam. Maybe you've got Friday and Saturday. Maybe you can just squeak in on Sunday morning. It doesn't matter. There's no badges. There's no this only access, that only access. It's just a bunch of nerds hanging out and having a good time. I'm going to be doing game demos of Space Hulk, of Hero Quest, of Dungeon. I'm going to be doing a how to play first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons game. So I am, I'm hyped about that. And I, I want you guys to be hyped about it too. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. So please come and check it out. Uh, Dungeon Minister has merch. Guess what? That's right. The Dungeon Minister has our merch for the con. Um, and it's for all of our conventions so far. It is for all of our conventions so far. Um, it's right there. It's down in the chat. Um, dungeon minister creator spring.com. Uh, I may give away some merch. I may give it. This show has merch. The link is in the description below. And if I'm going by sales, not many of you know that or care, but I, I might give away a t shirt or two. Um, when I get 3D printing, can I crank out some bill coin? <laughs> I don't know, Robert. I'm about to get really busy on the 3D printing front here. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I I sincerely hope you guys will come and sign up for the con. Again, it's free. It's free. So please do that. Please check us out. I think you'll have a lot of fun. Um, tomorrow night, because we basically have two nights where we're kind of falling back. We're kind of going a little retro. And we're falling back to our uh, our days of yore uh, because tomorrow night we're going to deep dive L2, the Assassin's Knot, the Len Lakofka, the second in the Lindor Isles modules. Um, <clears throat> we're we're going to be we're going to be checking that out, uh, and we're going to start it tomorrow night. And we don't have a guest next Thursday either, so we might be able to knock that module out it's been way too long since we've done a deep dive and i'm really looking forward to doing it so i hope you guys are are going to be uh hyped to check that out um now i i'm gonna i'm gonna spoil something a little bit not about that module just about stuff that's coming up so so that's tomorrow night that's thursday night uh friday night we play gamma world saturday uh saturday we don't do anything at all because I'm just going to be relaxing Sundays, Easter. So whatever. Um, but uh, I got something special coming up guys. I'm not going to tell you who, but as somebody you haven't seen before, guys, we're going to have the rarest of things. We're going to have an in studio live stream guest soon. And that's all I'm going to say about it. We're going to have an in-studio live stream guest, someone who is a fan of the show. And uh, they, they move in the creator circles. So we've been kind of thinking, and they're proximate to me. So, so we're like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. So I'm hyped about it, and I hope you guys will be hyped too. All righty, so uh, Mrs. Delver may, may may drop in. She drops in from time to time, Vaughn, but that's not that's not who I'm thinking of. So, with all that said, guys, let's get into it. Are you guys hyped? Are you ready for the mystery deep dive? Are you guys ready to explore something that we have only passingly discussed? Disgusting on the show before. I think you are. I think you're ready for it. So without further ado, adieu, let us jump right in and let us talk about the thing that we're going to talk about. I have a little bit of personal history only in the sense that I really wanted this, but I never got one, but I will, uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. 
Michael Dale says we should deep dive a classic issue of Dragon Magazine one day. I've done deep dives on on Dragon Magazine and everything else before. It's true. So without further ado, boys and girls, let's start deep diving, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the topic of discussion tonight is nothing less than the Dungeons and Dragons computer fantasy game, the action arcade series from Mattel Electronics released in 1981. Let's talk about this sucker. And before we dive into the article over here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how much I wanted one of these damn things when they came out. The closest I ever got to owning one was um, I went to a Sears outlet store in my neighborhood. And there was a case lot of these, Hale and Brennan, Michael Connor. There was a case lot of these bad boys in their toys, electronics area. Now, if you don't know what an outlet store is, basically it's a returns store. It is a returns store. Um, and they sold broken stuff that people brought back, clothes that got tried on, all sorts of things. And you want to know something? Well, that same outlet store. It was there for years and years. My wife still has a coat that she bought there when she was a teenager. We didn't know each other at the time. She has this lovely pink winter coat that she wears very that she wears very rarely. Hello, George. But she still has it. But I went in and I saw a case lot of these in the uh, kind of junk area that wasn't clothing because the store was like. 99% clothing, maybe 90% clothing. Um, so I see a case lot and I'm looking around and I'm looking around and I pop it open and there's that shiny blue box like you guys see on the screen there. Here, let me, let's, let's zo zoom Let's zoom in on that a little bit. So there's that. And I'm looking around and the box isn't taped shut or anything. I carefully slide it out. Now you see that about two inch LCD there? It might even be smaller. That thing is there, and it looks like someone has taken a screwdriver, a flat-edge screwdriver, and driven it right into the center of the screen. Well, damn it. Carefully slide it. Take the next one. Open it up. Same thing. And there were like, I think there were six. Every one of them had been thus smacked. So, yeah. Now, uh, one bit of trivia about this. Um, Mattel, only public, uh, Mattel only sold this for a little while, but even after they no longer wanted to work with TSR, they sold off the remaining stock as the uh, like electronic labyrinth or computer fantasy game. The, basically, there was no Dungeons and Dragons branding on the box or anything like that. So you might be able to find the same thing. So let's get into what this is. Let's go back to the page and get into what this is. First of all, I think we would do a uh, a a. a Discredit if we did not talk about the creator. Um, Peter Oliphant, who unfortunately passed away last summer, was an American actor and video game designer. He he played Freddie Helper on the on the Dick Van Dyke show. He became a video game uh, designer, programmer, and producer. Uh, he worked on Stone Keep. If you guys remember Stone Keep, a great fantasy role playing game. Uh, he worked at Mattel Electronics, creating handheld electronics game. And he passed away uh, in May of 2023 at the age of 72. 
So Michael Dale, I think, comes closest to the pin there. Someone probably was uh, caught up in the, the panic and breaking all those. Or it was just some destructive shit. But anyway, so unfortunately, uh, Peter has has left us. But we're going to talk about his creation. So let's let's talk about it then. It was released in the fall of 1981. Mattel stated that the game immediately sold out, setting it apart from some of Mattel Electronics' more well-known sports theme handhelds. Right there. Okay, thank you, Dungeon Delvers. Uh, it's a portable game with an LCD screen and is powered by watch batteries. The game opens with an isometric view of a simple 3D dungeon. The player is represented by a minor character who appears to be holding a sword aloft. The protagonist is at a crossroads in four passageways. The character's placement is indicated by an expanded letter and number, which always starts at A0. A cursor button moves a black arrow in one of four directions, while a move button... Uh, moves the surface in the same way. The character that the player would be controlling and the maze are depicted in the bottom left corner of the tiny screen, giving room for other icons that indicate when other items and monsters are nearby in one of the four directions. This contains a bat that can randomly pick up the character and place the character elsewhere in the maze. There's also a pit that will kill the character if the character does not have a rope to pull up themselves up out of the pit. The rope occurs at the beginning of the game's most accessible setting in the dungeon in the intermediate location, and there is no rope in the most challenging environment. So, yeah. The LCD screen displayed a dungeon in Dungeon Junction in quasi-3D dimensions, coupled with hints of routes that the player could explore further. Each intersection also featured a number and a le letter designation, allowing the player to create a map while searching. So it had a D&D &D thing going on. You had to map this dungeon. You had to map this dungeon as you went. However, uh, let's see, the dungeon itself was made up of 100 squares laid out in 10 rows of 10. However, because the dungeon circled around itself, if the player were to walk beyond the edge in any direction, the character would resurface at the other edge. The gameplay is similar to Hunt the Wumpus, and I've talked about that before, in that the player moves through a maze, must be aware of bats and pits, and must find an arrow and shoot it at the dragon without entering its lair directly. To win, the player must find the magical arrow, then the dragon, and then shoot it with a weapon while in another room. Every few seconds, an ominous four-tone piece of music plays as the player navigates through the maze. Each movement is accompanied by a tapping sound that is meant to indicate movement. The player will hear a descending sound followed by a few notes from a death dirge if the character falls into a pit. Unlike Hunt the Wumpus, D&D's gameplay takes place on a 10 by 10 grid with each square representing a different room. The positioning of the dozen pits, the magic arrow, rope, and dragon are determined at random in each game. When the player wins, the player is given a score based on how long it took to complete the game, with one point provided for every five seconds. With its offset LCD screen and weird graphic of white outlined cobblestones, the entire game is approximately the size of an inch thick or so credit card. According to Oliphant, the game was much easier to code because it was turn-based and followed a set of rules rather than relying on real-time activity. Rather like D&D, huh? While he was working on the prototype, another group was in charge of programming the production version that was presented to the market. He does recall, though, that it was a system with limited memory that made full use of it. I would imagine, given the size of this thing, it probably had memory that was measured in the tens of bytes. I can't imagine that this thing had more than, you know, 128 bytes of RAM in it, maybe. 
Oliphant believes Mattel Electronics sought to venture out from its usual sports games for this handheld in order to get numerous licenses for new properties in order to widen the types of games we were developing. As a result, licensed games like Battlestar Galactica, Flash Gordon, and Masters of the Universe were developed, as well as non-licensed oddities like Chess, Backgammon, and Horoscope Computer. Electronic Games in 1983 wrote that Dungeons and Dragons is, quote, sure to win your heart. The magazine liked the gameplay and sound effects and concluded that it is an exciting and novel approach to the famous fantasy game. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a lovely. No, I'm just kidding with you. Of course, we're going to take a deeper look. Guys, this is deep dive, not wade in shallow and read a Wikipedia article. No, no. I am the Dungeon Delver, and I bring you the goods. Let's take a look at the manual. And unfortunately, in case you were hoping maybe for some hidden Sutherland or Trampier or, or Errol Otis art, you're not going to find it here. We have a reproduction uh, very simply of the death of the dragon and the, the warrior there offing him on the screen. And I'm touching the screen like you guys can see my finger. Um, no, I, I, I haven't, Michael. That's a shame. Yes, it did run on, uh, it did run on watch batteries. Uh, but anyway, so here we have Mattel Electronics Dungeons & Dragons Computer Fantasy Game. And by the way, uh, yes, the souvenir font that we're seeing there, um, was required by TSR. If you said Dungeons & Dragons in your product, it had to be all caps and that souvenir font. Dungeons & Dragons is a trademark owned and used under license from TSR Hobbies. The com this computer fantasy game is approved by TSR Hobbies Incorporated, the publisher of the fantasy role-playing games sold under the trademark Dungeons & Dragons. Object of the game, slay the evil dragon as quickly as you can. Avoid flying bats and pips that pits that trap you find the magic arrow and shoot the dragon if your aim is good you win score shows your game time be wary but be fast if you enter the dragon's lair he'll devour you if you take too long the dungeon door will close sealing you inside See, that's not something they mentioned there in the wikipedia article so yes uh two watch calculator type batteries already installed a thin plastic tab prevents battery contact so it wouldn't start running until you pulled the uh plastic tab out um yeah pitfall was definitely a call to to indiana jones yeah um Find tab sticking out and pull it, uh, gently pull it and throw it away. The game will come on and stay on. Gently push the all clear button with a pencil or pen tip to set the game com uh, computer properly. Game starts in demonstration mode. And then we have demonstration mode. You guys kind of get a good look there. Once battery contact is made, the game remains on all the time. Demonstration mode, you know, I don't have to have this over there. I can actually move it over here. Let's see. Um, to switch to demonstration mode at the end of a game, hold down the attack button for five seconds. Put the game in demonstration mode when you are not using it. Yeah, 20, the 2600 homebrew screen is awesome. Game controls. Cursor. Press to select a direction uh, to move the warrior or shoot the arrow. Each time the button is pressed, a cursor arrow appears, pointing outward from the dungeon room in one of four directions, top, right, bottom, or left. Move. Press to move the warrior into an adjacent room in the direction shown by the cursor arrow. Attack. Press to shoot the magic arrow into an adjacent room in the direction shown by the cursor arrow. All clear. Gently push with a pencil or pen tip to put the game in demonstration mode. Start the game. Press attack button to get out of demonstration mode. Screen shows L1 for skill level 1. Press move button one or two times to select skill level 2 or 3. Press it again and you go back to level 1. The skill levels. Level 1. Warrior possesses magic rope at start of game. Level 2. Magic rope is hidden randomly in an empty room at the start of the game and must be found to be used. Level 3. There is no magic rope. Any step into a pit and the warrior has had it! 
Three, press the attack button again to start the game. The warrior always starts out in the top left room of the dungeon. Think of the dungeon as the dungeon. Think of the dungeon as a grid. 10 squares across and 10 squares down. Each square represents a room that can be occupied by the warrior or other objects. Some helpful, some dangerous. The rooms across the grid are numbered 0 through 9. The rooms down the grid are letters A through J. The dungeon is too big to be shown all at once. You see only the room occupied by the warrior. The exact location of this room in the dungeon grid is covered is given by letter numbered coordinates. Coordinates are displayed in the center of the room, letter first, then number. Room coordinates, warrior's starting position, and we have a little example of the graphics. Right, ciao. Moving in the dungeon. The warrior can move up, down, right, or left, not diagonally. Since this is a magic dungeon, its outer boundaries do not stop movement. If the warrior is moved beyond a dungeon boundary, he magically reappears in the corresponding room on the other side of the dungeon. Move warrior left from A0, he ends up in A9. The same magic works when you shoot the arrow. If you shoot up from room A0, the arrow will end up in room J0. How to play. Move the warrior through the dungeon one room at a time. Press cursor button until cursor arrow points in the direction you want to move. Then press move button. The dungeon room disappears and you see the warrior walking. If the move is safe, no pits, dragon, or bats. The screen shows a new dungeon room with new coordinates. If the room contains a magic arrow or rope, the warrior automatically takes possession. You shall hear a short tune and an arrow possession symbol or rope possession symbol appears. Symbol remains until the object is used. If the move is not safe, next event depends on the object encountered. Dragon, the warrior's dead. The game is over. And you guys call me a, br a brutal dungeon master. Pit. If the warrior possesses the rope, it appears and he climbs up out of the pit. Rope disappears into another room in the dungeon. Screen shows the dungeon room again. The warrior can continue moving. If the warrior does not possess the rope, he is trapped. The game is over. Bat. The bat picks up the warrior and randomly drops him in a, uh, any other room in the dungeon. If room is safe, screen shows new room and coordinates. If room is not safe, next event depends on what object is encountered. The bat flies off to a different room. Watch for flashing symbols on the top or right side of the screen. These tell you that an object is located in an adjacent room. They do not tell you which adjacent room or how many objects surround you. For example, you only see one pit symbol, whether one, two, or three pits are nearby. So it's a little bit like Minesweeper in that. More than one flashing symbol may appear at the same time, but this does not mean the objects are in the same room. Only one object may occupy a room at any given time unless one or more objects are possessed by the warrior while in that room. And then we have kind of an example screen there. We have the bat, the magic arrow, the magic rope, the dragon, the pit, the magic rope, you have it, magic arrow, you have it. A short tune also plays when the warrior enters a room adjacent to the magic arrow or rope. A different warning tune plays when the warrior enters a room adjacent to the dragon. Find the magic arrow first and the rope, if playing on level two, then go after the dragon. When you think you have found his lair, shoot the arrow into that room from an adjacent room. The magic arrow only has a one room range. Press the cursor button until the cursor arrow points in the direction you want to shoot. Press attack to shoot the arrow. If the dragon is in the room in, into which you shot, the arrow automatically kills him and you win. You will hear a winner's tune and see the dragon with an arrow in his chest. Your score for the game is displayed. If the dragon is not in the room into which you shot, you see a poof and the magic arrow disappears into another empty room in the dungeon. The dragon also moves to another empty room and you have to find both again. If you are trapped, eaten, or run out of time, the game is over and you hear a short defeat tune. If you are trapped or eaten, the screen freezes on the last display 
Uh, if you run out of time, the screen goes blank and then displays its time score of 99. To start a new game, repeat the, proce the procedure on page 3. When you are finished playing, put the game in demonstration mode, page 2. And we continue reading. Time score. You see a time score only when you slay the dragon. You do not see a score when you are trapped or eaten. For each five seconds of time used, you get one point. Maximum number of points possible is 99. After 99, the game, is of the game automatically ends. The lowest score is the best score, like golf. Game details. Pits. 12 pits are randomly placed around in empty rooms. At the start of the game, pits are placed at least one room away from each other, except where dungeon boundaries occur. Some possible pit locations. Actual pit placement is random. The only way out of a pit is with a magic rope. If the warrior falls into a pit without the rope, the game is over. The dragon. The dragon is randomly placed in an empty room at the start of the game. He does not move unless you shoot the magic arrow and miss him. He then moves to another empty room. If the warrior enters the dragon's room at any time, the dragon eats him and the game ends. The magic arrow. The magic arrow is the only weapon that will slay the dragon. It is randomly hidden in an empty room at the start of the game. When the warrior enters the room containing the magic arrow, he automatically takes it. It remains with him at all times until he shoots it. If a shot misses the dragon, the arrow disappears into another empty room and must be found again. Only one magic arrow per game. Arrow can be shot across dungeon boundaries. See page 8. Bats. Four bats are randomly placed in empty rooms at the start of the game. Only one bat per room. Bats can move. Every 10 seconds, any or all of the bats may move to empty adjacent rooms. No diagonal movement. When a bat moves, you hear a four-note signal. Page four. The magic rope. The magic rope is the only object that will rescue the warrior from a pit, providing he possesses it before falling into the pit. The rope exists only in level one and two games. No rope in a level three game. See page four. If the rope is hidden, the warrior automatically takes possession when he enters a room containing, containing it. He keeps it until he uses it. Once the rope is used, he disappears into another empty room. It disappears and it must be found again. One rope per game. And then it talks about how to replace it and our warranty. And there's how you get uh, your service from Mattel. Thank you to the handheld museum. Wasn't that fun? Wasn't that fun, guys? Wasn't it cool and interesting to, to study about that, guys? Listen, thank you, everybody, for hanging out, for watching this deep dive on a classic handheld. Uh, we'll be back to... What? Was it that? That's not enough? You don't, that, that, that wasn't enough. Uh, fine. So is this a great, great, great granddaddy of Dragon Slayer? No, this is the, the son of Hunt the Wumpus. Dragon Slayer was a quick time game. This is not a quick time game. So I suppose you guys want more. We've done the Wikipedia overview. We've looked at the all too short biography of the, the guy who created the thing. I've told you about my personal experience with it. We've read the manual. What more do you guys want? <sighs> Fine. I guess. I guess, guys, we'll have to play that's right there's an online emulator for this so who's up for a little dungeons and dragons computer fantasy game this evening i don't have one these things are a couple hundred bucks vaughn if you can find one working on flea bay
Uh, my favorite arcade game was Wizard of War. Don't I have the big Mattel Electronics D&D game? Yes, I do. It's up over there. Well, you guys can't see me pointing it out. All right, so let's uh, let's look at the manual real quick. And let's start a game. Who wants to map? All right, let's press the attack button. Uh, we're doing this on level one first. We're doing this on level one. So here we go. So we press attack. And I think we press attack again. Okay, so the bats are in an adjacent room. Um, and we are in room A0. All right. Oh, there's a pit nearby. I don't like that. Let's go south. Hey, Wheeling Dragon, how are you, sweetie? All right, we're in B1. Nothing's nearby. I'm feeling good about moving south. We're in C1. Everything seems to be okay. We're in D1. It is empty. Now, unfortunately, guys, we're working without sound here. So if the dragon's adjacent, we're not going to know it. Or no, it, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll see the, the dragon uh, icon. It's always the box art that pulled you into those old games, isn't it, Lux? All right. I feel like we got to move in a different direction, though. We've been going south long enough. Let's go. Uh, let's go west again. All right, we are in D zero. Let's go north. Charlie zero. Well, we know A zero and B zero are good, so let's cursor over. We're in C9, and there's a pit nearby. Not liking it. Let's chance it. I mean, we got the rope. Oh, no! The dragon is nearby. Okay. All right, guys. The dragon's in an adjacent room. The dragon is in an adjacent room, guys. What direction do we fire the arrow? Do we fire it to the left, up, or down? We know he's not to the right. Left, up, or down? Vince says, Vince says we are leaving is what Vince says. Come on, adventuring party. There's 22 of you out there. Vaughn says left. Anybody want to? Wenger says north. Vaughn says left. Perhaps I should roll a D4. Back the way I came and skirt around for an educated guess. Because that's true. The dragon doesn't move. I like your thinking. I actually, I actually like Robert Phillips' uh, thinking. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We know the dragon is in one of those rooms. We know he's north, south, or west. So if we go back east move north, and we get the dragon again, we know he's in C7 or B7, B8, something, anyway. 
Oh, Robert knows what's going on. Okay. All right. Robert is the expert. All right, so let's move north. Ah, north was a pit. Okay, so we climbed out of the pit in B9, and we know the dragon is not adjacent in B9, but we're now without the rope. All right, so C9, and we know the pit. Uh-oh, there's a bat. A bat has moved. I repeat, a bat has moved. No, the dragon doesn't move unless we take a shot at him and miss. So let's go south. I said, let's go south. D9, and there's a bat. Okay, so the dragon isn't adjacent in this direction. He wasn't adjacent to the north. He's not adjacent to the south. I think the dragon's to the west. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, well, we know we're safe back to the north. So let's move back to the north. Let's move back to the north. Now, let's move back. Okay, I think, I think the dragon is to the west of us. I think the dragon's to the west of us. Robert, what do you think, bud? What do you think, Robert? Is the dragon to the west of us? I feel like he's to the west of us. If the dragon use a breath weapon, jump into the pit. I don't think it works that way. I think. Can't find anything on which a pro uh, on which pro. No, no, no. I, you're not going to. This was um, almost certainly just like a microcontroller. If it was anything, it would have been like a four-bit product. Now, believe it or not, the Dungeons & Dragons Electronic Labyrinth game um, with the, the pieces, the board game, which we're going to do a deep dive on that someday, um, has a Texas Instrument four-bit processor in it. It actually has a four-bit processor, a little bit of RAM. All right, guys. This is it, every five seconds. So we're going to do it. We're going to fire the arrow. Oh, we fired our arrow. Wait, nope. We fired our arrow and we missed. And wait a minute. Hang on. I fired my arrow in that direction and then I moved that direction and we still got eaten by the dragon. I think that's kind of BS. But anyway, guys, there you have it. Does anyone want to go for another round? Does anyone want to see another playthrough of it? Round one to the dragon. By the way, do you guys want the link to this uh, to this emulator? If anyone would like the link to this emulator, let me know, and I will stick it in the uh, in the comments down there. 
All right. So here we go. I'm sticking with level one, guys. I suck. What can I say? Until I master level one, I'm not moving on to level two. All right. So we got our rope. We're just going north. There's a pit nearby. Let's just keep going north. There, we, we are walking between pits is what we're doing. There's a bat nearby. Nothing. Oh, see, I thought we had the arrow. Okay, so the arrow is nearby. The arrow is nearby. I thought I thought we had the arrow. All right. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna chance it. I'm gonna move. Nope. Um, so the arrow is either to the left or to the right. Nope. I would have lost my life to this game. I, I would have played this game until it fell apart. Okay, now we have the arrow and there's a pit nearby. Oops, I did not mean to move. I, I literally, I clicked. Fortunately, we have the rope, but we've lost the rope. But the rope is nearby. Maybe it's in the next room. The bats are nearby. So this is definitely storing some value. Well, damn. <laughs> this is it's definitely storing some values, guys. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna link y'all to the uh to the actual emulator. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Actually, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen first so I can type in peace. Uh, let me see. Emulator, emulator, emulator. It's in one of these tabs I've got open here, guys. Don't mind me. Is it in that one, maybe? There we are. And there are a lot of, of simulators and emulators. There you guys go. This is magicaldesigns.it sim download. Now, what makes these different from uh, emulators? See, here's the thing. An emulator will use more resources on your computer than this thing will. This um, simulator is simulating everything, right? You're not pressing keys on your keyboard or anything. And what is what is here, you know what? We'll, sh we'll share a screen. We'll look at what this guy's got because we, we like the old school around here so let's take a look let's go shopping because all this stuff is for download guys on this dude's website um he's got original releases he talks about all that stuff got a cd collection and this is pretty old i should point out Uh, armor battle, 
again, Mattel. Asterix Hunt for the Boars. Banana. Baseball. Bomb Flight. Uh, Heathcliff. Another Heathcliff. Cheeky Wuggy. <laughs> Condor. Crazy Chewy. Defendo. Donkey Angler. Donkey Kong for um for uh the Coleco VFD Donkey Kong, couple of LCD Donkey Kongs, Donkey Kong Two, Donkey Kong Circus, Donkey Kong Junior, uh, a couple more Donkey Kong Juniors, and here we are at Dungeons and Dragons. That is the only Dungeons and Dragons. I do wonder if he has the generic Mattel uh computer fantasy game here. Let's let's have a quick look. Galaxy. Grab man, grab man. Uh, does not does not appear that he does. So he just has the branded Dungeons and Dragons one, which is fine. Oh, Snoopy, he's got a Snoopy game there. Tron, I'm sure that's authentic. You know, just get that full arcade experience going. So there you go, guys. If you're itching to play this and any of these other types of games, you just go to Madrigal Simulations and give it a give it a whirl. So someone had asked, do I in fact have the Dungeons and Dragons Electronic Labyrinth game? I do, actually. I I, I do. Um let me see. Playing some breakout next. Yeah. Not hardly. I would love to see the original table tennis simulated. That would be fun. First video game, 1951. It was done on an oscilloscope. And it had all kinds of features. You could put English on the ball. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, do you guys want to see the Mattel game? I've shown the Mattel game off on the show before, but... I can certainly do so again. This wasn't the original plan to, to bring this one out. I'm not going to do a let's play on this tonight. We're already a, a, approaching an hour. So, you know. This game will turn you to an... Yeah, yeah, it, it would definitely would. And I think if you are already a fan of D&D, &D, which is almost certainly who would be primarily targeted by this dungeon mapping view it's, it's oh yeah okay i know i know how to do this is everybody out there downloading all of these madly the bit yes robert the big mattel D, &D. half a moment let me fetch it for you there seems to be some interest just just half a tick. I need like a waiting like graphic thing like a, while I'm away instead of you guys just staring at the wall and my fat ass when I stand up and walk away. Uh, but for now, hold that thought. One more minute, guys.
And let's see how well that does or does not show up on camera. Uh, not well at all. I think I'm zoomed in too much. All right, let me just adjust that. Oh, neat. You don't have to display that in full screen mode. That's much nicer, just having it on the screen like that. All right, let's see here. Studio view. To, no, that's not the studio view I wanted. All right, let me adjust this, guys. Oh, yeah, we're, we're zoomed way the heck in. That's a little bit better. Camera's a little wonk. But you guys can see it there. This is the Computer Labyrinth game. In all of its glory. You have a nice poster of that box. You know the poster goes more, uh, or goes for more on eBay than the actual game does? It's crazy. All right. You guys have seen it. You want it? Uh, I, I don't know who the artist is on. Uh, I don't think anyone does. Um, you guys, you guys want to see it uh, out of the box? You want to see what it looks like? This is the Mattel Electronics Dungeons and Dragons uh, computer electronic labyrinth. Anyway, I'll pop it out of here and show it to y'all. So unlike the other one, this one is a this one is a two player game and it is always in PvP mode. Yes, you can fight other players in the game because that's a wise thing to be doing when the dragon's about to bear down on you. It's been sitting for a while. So I'm going to put the box safely over here. Hopefully I won't roll over it with my chair at the end of the game. Uh, I do not know if the battery in here works. I should probably make sure it hasn't leaked because that would be awful. I don't know if you guys heard that. See, you know how people talk about the 80s were the great era for video games? This is an audio game. You have to be able to identify what each of those sounds is when they happen. That camera wonk is driving me crazy. So each, um, each one of these buttons will play the sounds, and you have to keep them memorized. So go there. You have to know what each one of those means as you move around this wonderfully illustrated maze. And in case you're wondering, no, these pictures on the maze don't mean anything. Uh, someone was kind enough to scribble on my manual for me. Thank you, whoever that was. 
But let's read up about this a little bit. Oh, it's still wonky and it's still out of focus. Maybe I can come over and do a little bit of focus magic and you guys can see that better. That's a little better. Yeah, that's way better. Well, somewhat better. Moderately better, anyway. Is Mattel still? Yeah, Mattel's still around. So anyway, here's the uh, here's the manual. <laughs> Luck says Hollywood spent decades uh, convinced that all video games sound like that. They do. So here we go. Uh, do you guys want that on screen or me back on screen? Labyrinth, a structure containing an intricate network of winding passages hard to follow without losing one's way. Maze, Webster's New World Dictionary, second college edition. Dungeons and Dragons Computer Labyrinth game is an electronic game of strategy, imagination, and adventure. It is inspired by the well-known Dungeons and Dragons fantasy role-playing game published by TSR Hobbies Incorporated. Within the dungeon labyrinth lurks a deadly dragon guarding a fantastic treasure. Your object is to find and steal the treasure, then get it back to your secret room before the dragon gets you or your rival warrior robs you. You'll never unravel the secrets of this labyrinth, for the computer generates a different labyrinth each time you turn on the game. Uh, no, these... Um, uh, th there, there are no monsters. There is only the uh the dragon to hunt you down you get a touch sen touch sensitive electronic playing board an imaginary treasure to find and steal a dragon guarding the treasure to outwit and avoid a labyrinth with invisible walls that shift each game you play a door doors that close in open corridors advanced skill level only a secret room of your own where the dragon can't find you electronic sound clues that help you find doors and walls warn you when the dragon is awake and on the move Continuous calculation of your opponent of your and your opponent's strength, playing pieces to help you keep track of walls, your movements, your opponent, the dragon, and the treasure, markers for both secret rooms and the treasure room, two ways to play alone against the computer or against a rival warrior and the computer, two skill levels, beginner and advanced. And it uses a battery. It has a it has a jack in it. I think this actually can also take a uh, an external power brick, but I want to be very careful before I try that out. I don't have a copy of Dragon Strike Engine, Joe. So we're not going to get into this. We're not going to get into uh, the gameplay on this one tonight, guys. Um, However, I will show you guys the pieces that come with it. I will show you guys the uh, the the pieces that come with it. So we'll um, we'll we'll give those a look in just a second, and we'll do we'll do a deep dive on this someday. So let's look at the pieces. They are conveniently stored too. I will show you guys here where you can find those. They are in a drawer. I'm sure you just heard them rattling around. They're in a drawer that is, uh, ah, it's over here. Okay. So we have, now I actually had to 3D print some of these pieces myself because it was missing some. So the token, uh, wait, is that, no, no, that's not one I printed. Ah, here are the tokens. So the, uh, Warrior 1's token. I'm not sure if that's going to show up there. And Warrior 2's token. And then I 3D printed some of my own wall pieces. But the wall pieces, they go on the sides like this. Every time you bump into a wall, you put down another piece, and you'll get an idea of how big the maze is. 
Here's Warrior One. Not exactly Grenadier quality. Warrior Two. Likewise. The Dragon's Treasure Chest. And the Dragon itself. And those are all very, very, very cheap metal. And when you find the Dragon's Horde or you drop the treasure, you put that where it is, where it got dropped. And then there's these hexagonal pieces, which represent the rooms where your characters begin. Oh, 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 don't, don't slide under there. I'll have to get that out with forceps. But as you move along and bump into walls, you simply map it out by putting the wall pieces down. And uh, again, oh, I must have hit the, uh... yes, I'm, I'm, I'm bumping the start button, which is kind of funny because the postman delivered it and it was making noises. It was making noises while it was on the front porch. It was making noises in my house. He must have been listening to that thing beat all day because it kept bumping against the inside of its box. And the pieces aren't bad. I mean, they're okay. For the day, they're pretty good. And I would imagine, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if someone out there uh, did not break those out for their game. Like, this is my fighter. So, um, yeah, that's that's really just about it, guys. Uh, you know, Robert, the, uh, the, the figures, these are all metal. The warriors, the treasure, and the dragon are all metal. The wall pieces, I don't really consider those that consequential. But we'll do a um, we'll do a full playthrough demo of that one of these nights. Uh, I would say we would do it tomorrow night, but tomorrow night, of course, we're going to be deep diving into L1. So I hope you guys had fun tonight. I certainly did digging into the uh, the specifics of the the computer fantasy game playing it a few times with you guys, getting eaten by a dragon, then dying in a pit. Um, but I think these games have uh, some stuff in common. This is almost like the advanced version of the computer fantasy game. Wouldn't you guys say it's got a little bit more flexibility and whatnot? Um, oh, yeah. Hero quest pieces for D&D. &D. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yes, Vaughn, if you poke around, it's been years since I looked at it. Uh, but there's a Dark Tower emulator. I tried playing it. Man, that thing kicked my ass. Um, a play do we we will do a playthrough one of these nights, Robert. So I think that's just about going to wrap it up. I know it's kind of a short evening, guys, but I hope you guys enjoyed the surprise dive into the computer fantasy game. I've been kind of sitting on that one. I was pretty excited about it, but. Uh, we were, we were a smaller crowd tonight, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Don't always have to have 50, 60 people out in the audience. But um, we'll be back tomorrow night with the dive into L2. I'll, I'll update you guys on anything that needs to be updated about the guac. And, uh, you know... As good as these games are, and uh, first of all, before I go uh, too much further, thank you, Wenger and Robert Phillips, very much for the super chats. I greatly appreciate those. Um, yes, there'll be a T-shirt giveaway. It's not. It's it's not tonight. I will be giving away merch at the convention. There will be a T-shirt given away at the convention. Um, but anyway, uh, so. Yes, uh, we'll we'll talk some more tomorrow night about diving into L1. And regardless of these computer games, those guy, though, guys, 
I think we can say that they're both kind of lacking in one very critical way. And that is, of course, they don't have an owl bear. How could they? Peace. I'll talk to you later. Have you seen my owl bear? Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobs are all around, some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way off course? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smoky Joe's. Have you seen the little creep driving fast in his little green jeep? He smells like fish and brandy, but his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show, I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me to the show.